The eagle-eyed viewer may have noticed the return of my Colt Mag AR9 pistol in the last couple of videos. I recently decided to shake the rust off and give it a much needed upgrade. Last time I let it out of the penalty box where I keep my terrible guns, it still had the extremely short upper on it. That was a 4 inch KAK Industries barrel with a KAW Valley Precision Mach 3 linear compensator on it, and an old Yankee Hill short quad rail. It was kind of a fun configuration, but also ballistically inferior to a Glock 19. It was also unreliable in a bunch of different ways. Oh, when, you, when you inserted that magazine, that round tried to jump out of it and was facing very, very... <laughs> I got my maracas, we're good. Fuck's sake, I fucking hate this gun. I bought a replacement barrel for it a long time ago, and I've just been waiting for some parts to come back into stock in order to build out a new upper. Well, it's been like a year with no action on my in-stock notifications, so I assume Spike's Tactical just isn't going to make any more of their 9mm specific stripped uppers. So, I just swapped the new parts onto the old trash upper. The new upper configuration has an 8-inch Caw Valley Precision Barrel with a KAK Industries Compensator and an old UTG Pro Slim Handguard. I enjoy the pottery of replacing a CAC Barrel and KVP Muzzle Device with a KVP Barrel and a CAC Muzzle Device. It rhymes. While I was screwing around with this gun, I went ahead and swapped the SB Tactical SOB Brace out for an SBA-3. Since I was replacing the buffer tube, I went ahead and installed a new buffer detent and spring. If you recall, the old one fell out and got chewed up by the fire control group because PSA didn't screw in the original buffer tube all the way. They basically never do that. I wonder if it's their calling card or something. The longer barrel and handguard makes this a much safer gun to shoot, and the extra velocity probably can't hurt either. There's also enough rail space for LAM, so I've been shooting it with night vision and may use it as a test mule for other devices going forwards. The gun is now very fun to shoot reasonably light and it's still very handy. The new compensator has virtually no effect on recoil or muzzle climb. The straight line recoil makes controlling muzzle climb fairly easy, but shooting a blowback AR9 is jarring, I guess is the word for it. It's violent, these things are jumpy. It's easier to keep it on target than the PTR9CT, but it's always on the verge of getting away from you. You might remember that the old configuration had some significant reliability problems. Inserting a magazine too forcefully would dislodge the top round and jam the gun up pretty bad. I did some tinkering and testing and realized that I only had that issue with ASC magazines, not the much nicer and much more expensive metal form magazines. I also realized it was only an issue if they were loaded with an even number of rounds. Since I tend to load magazines to multiples of 10 for range time, that meant it happened a lot. Depending on how you want to look at it, I've actually tried three different types of magazines in my AR9. The one on the left is a metal form magazine. The other two are virtually identical. One of them is by ASC. The other one is made by C Products. ASC and C Products are basically identical. I think somebody out there will definitely try to say no. Technically, actually, they are separate companies. But I believe one of the companies was formed by former employees of the other company. All of their products look exactly the same, they're built in exactly the same way, and they seem to have exactly the same design and tolerances. ASC and C Products both have a pretty abysmal reputation on the market. C Products is currently trying to rebrand itself as Duramag, but as far as I can tell, it's still the same old shit. So, one of these two magazines is a C Products mag, the other one is an ASC mag. The only way to tell is by looking at the stamping on the floor plate. This magazine is a metal form mag. Metal form was the OEM for the original Colt Sticks, I believe. They make their own mags under the metal form brand name, and they also produce the Brownells branded magazines. For a long time, I was pretty sure that the issue I was having with the ASC and C Products magazines was that the round presenting on the left would contact the ejector when the magazine was inserted. It would kick the first round of the magazine out a little bit and then jam the gun up, you know, a pretty good percentage of the time. The reason I thought that was the case is because the feed lips on the ASC and C products magazines come a little bit closer together. However, it turns out I was actually mistaken. The thing that is contacting the top round, if it's on the left side, is actually the last round bolt hold open lever. It doesn't happen on the metal form mags.
I have an anonymous contact on the Latvian Canoe Building Forums who was having the same issue with ASC magazines in his uh, PSA AR9. He did some measuring and found out that the distance between the bolt catch and the top of the magazine is actually different. It's longer on the ASC and the C Products magazines than it is on the metal forms. The metal form mags that I have all measure at approximately 1.16 inches and the ASC and the C Products mags measure in pretty much exactly at 1.2. I don't think that measurement is what causes the top round to get kicked out by the last round bolt hold open, but it probably is what causes the ASC and C products magazines to seat higher in the gun and come into contact with the ejector. That doesn't seem to be a major issue. I guess it could destroy the ejector over time. I've also occasionally over inserted one of the ASC or C products magazines and had the feed lip get jammed up on the side of the ejector. That's a really tough jam to clear. The quick, foolproof way to fix this issue is to stop buying ASC magazines and replace them with metal form magazines. The more time-consuming way is to file down the top of the mag catch on the ASC mags a bit. I'm not going to bother doing that to mine. It's metal form and nothing for me now. So, what's next for the Ghetto Colt Mag AR9? Maybe it's time for a new bolt carrier group. The one I have in it right now is a Spinta flat side, and it still sometimes fails to go into battery, and when it does, the round often falls off the extractor, and the gun jams up pretty good. Maybe not, though. Maybe this gun deserves a trip to the same glue factory where all the busted poverty ponies go to die. Thanks for watching. See you later.